Today I'm going to share some tips and techniques for creating texture resources in Photoshop and Illustrator. Rather than being a tutorial with a particular final result, this video will instead show you how to make some custom assets that you can use as tools to produce awesome artwork, or even sell them as premium design resources on sites such as Creative Market. Textures form an integral part of a design. They can be used as backgrounds upon which your other elements are laid, they can be overlaid over photos and artwork to apply grungy effects, or they can be used to distress your artwork to give it an aged and weathered look. Basically, they take your clean digital designs and make them more tangible to simulate how things look and feel in real life. You can find texture resources everywhere, you just need to photograph or scan materials with interesting surfaces. You can process them in a range of different ways for different uses in your design software, which is what I'll be showing you today. So I went on a quick texture hunting session around my house to find some interesting textures to use as examples. Proper cameras will give you a good resolution that will be perfect for print designs, but even your phone camera will suffice, especially if you're going to be converting the textures into vector resources where the detail and resolution doesn't matter as much. One of my favourite places to grab textures is skylight windows. They naturally collect all kinds of dirt, grime and bird poop that can be transformed into subtle grunge textures. Take photos on a misty morning or an overcast day to avoid getting the sky and clouds in the background. The first thing I like to do with all my textures is equalise the image. You'll always find that textures sourced via a camera rather than a scanner always have a light side and a darker side. To fix this, duplicate the background layer twice with the Command and J shortcut. Select the first duplicate and go to Filter, Blur and Average. This will fill the layer with a single colour. Select the top layer and go to Filter, Other and High Pass. Enter 200 pixels, then change this layer's blending mode to Linear Light. It might be necessary to turn down the opacity to tone down the sharpness and contrast so it better matches the original texture image. Shift and click to select both the duplicate layers, then use the Command and E shortcut to merge them into one layer. Toggle the visibility of this layer to see the difference this equalisation makes. This new version is much flatter, which will give you better results when it's used within your artwork. Open up the Image Adjustments and Levels menu to bring out the grainy details of the photo. Increase the shadows slightly to darken the texture bits, but completely blur out the highlights to remove the background. Move the mid-tone slider towards the shadows handle to increase the contrast to give clear definition between the texture bits and the white background. Desaturate the image under the Image Adjustments Desaturate menu to remove any colour information. It's useful to save variations of your textures as both black on white and white on black for use against dark and light designs. Go to Image Adjustments and Invert to flip the colours around. It's also handy to have a version of the texture with a transparent background. Open up the Channels panel and hold the Command key while clicking on the thumbnail of the RGB channel. Switch back to the Layers panel and add a new layer. Use the Alt and Backspace shortcut to fill this selection with black. Toggle off the visibility of the other layers and deselect to see the texture against transparency. You can test how it looks by adding a layer underneath and filling it with a random colour. If you see any haloing around your texture, use the Layer, Matting and Defringe command at one pixel to trim it slightly. To preserve the transparency, you need to save the file as a PNG image. Doing this via the Save As command, rather than Save For Web, will retain the 300 ppi resolution. Another useful way to process your textures is to create a seamless pattern that will infinitely repeat over a large area. This doesn't work with all texture types, but is ideal for subtle textures with even distribution and contrast. Begin by equalising your image, otherwise the texture will never repeat because of the lighting differences from one side to the other. Duplicate the image twice and then apply the average blur to the first layer. Add a 200 pixel high pass to the top layer and change its blending mode to linear light. In this example, the high pass layer opacity needs reducing quite a lot to tone down the sharpness and contrast to better match the original image. Merge these two duplicate layers with the Command and E shortcut, then toggle the layer on and off to see the difference it makes. Crop the image into a square by holding the Shift key while dragging across the image with the Crop tool. It's sometimes worth scaling this crop towards the centre to eliminate the blurry pixels from around the edge of the photograph. Go to Image Adjustments and Image Size, Round up the figures and make a mental note of the value. Next go to Filter, Other and Offset, 
and then to half the image size value in the fields. So in my example, half of 2400 pixels is 1200 pixels. The offset command ensures the edges of the textures will repeat when this image is placed side by side and top to bottom, but there's some hard lines running through the middle. Select the patch tool and draw a rough selection around the line, then drag the selection to a clean portion of the texture. Photoshop will automatically fill and blend the new selection. Those patches should blend in nicely when you zoom back out. Go to edit and define pattern to make a pattern swatch out of this texture. You can test the pattern out in a new document. Change the settings of the fill tool to pattern and choose your texture from the drop down list. If your original photo had an even distribution of texturing, the pattern should repeat nicely with no obvious repetition. Vector textures are also useful tools to have in your arsenal. The great thing about creating vector textures is you can often get away with lower quality images or resolutions since any fuzzy pixels are converted to crisp vector shapes anyway. I'm using a rust texture for this example. A lot of the surrounding pixels have some lens distortion so I'm cropping a portion from the centre. After all the size doesn't really matter because the vectorized texture can be scaled up or down later. Equalize the texture using the same technique showed earlier in this video. Then desaturate and adjust the levels to boost the contrast and leave the black and white details of the texture. Select all with the Command and A shortcut, then press Command and C to copy. Open up Adobe Illustrator and create a new document at any size. Paste in the image with the Command and V shortcut, then scale it down in size. To convert the image to vectors, we need to vectorize it with the Image Trace panel. Open it up from under the Window menu. Expand the advanced settings and begin by checking the preview option to see how the default settings convert the image. The result doesn't look too bad, but you can fine tune it by adjusting the settings and sliders. Begin by selecting ignore white, which will erase the background, leaving just the texture grain. Deselect snap curves to lines to avoid any curves being converted to straight edges. I also like to reduce the corners slider to zero so the grain has more of a round appearance than jaggy shapes. Since vector textures are made up of thousands of tiny paths, they can quickly bog down your CPU. It's worth increasing the noise slider at a pixel at a time to remove the tiniest pieces from the texture. Moving the threshold slider back and forth will generate more or less shapes from the original texture image. When you're happy with the textures, go to Objects and Expand to convert the image tracing into a series of vector paths. If you move the texture off the artboard, you'll see the background colour shows through. Being vector shapes means you can also change the colour of the texture by applying a different fill. One of the best ways to use vector textures is to punch it out of other shapes. Place the texture over another element, then make sure the texture sits on top using the Arrange Bring to Front command. With both objects selected, click the minus front button in the Pathfinder panel. The underlying shape now has the texture applied, so any background will show through the bits that have been erased. So I hope you find these tips useful for creating your own tools and resources to use within your projects. If you want to see how textures can be incorporated into your designs, I often show different techniques in my usual video tutorials, so look back through my channel for some ideas. Let me know if you'd like to see more of these tip kind of videos rather than tutorials that show you how to create a design from start to finish. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.